Ladies and gentlemen, to the organizers, participating researchers, and to our dear listeners, a pleasant afternoon to everyone. It is a privilege to be joining this international conference on economics, business, tourism, and social sciences to share the findings of our respective research studies. Before anything else, I am Debbie Caril F. Arquero, a Doctor of Philosophy and Criminal Justice student and a faculty member at the University of the Cordilleras College of Criminal Justice Education. And I will be presenting the research study entitled The Effectiveness of Using the Simulation Technology on Students' Performance in the Course Personal Identification Techniques at the University of the Cordilleras. Further, I would like to introduce to you my co-authors, namely Dr. Christian T. Pascual, the Director of the Institute of Innovative Learning and International Cooperation and the Program Chair of Forensic Science at the University of the Cordilleras, as well as Dr. Robino D. Kawi, the Graduate Program Coordinator in the College of Criminal Justice Education of the same university. To give you an overview of the background of the study, the criminology program, just like any other degree program, offers technical courses which require equipment and tools to develop certain skill sets. And among these technical courses is the personal identification techniques, which aims to help criminology graduates acquire the competence and skills needed by the industry in personal identification through dactyloscopy and other techniques. But with a sudden shift in learning modality, the effective delivery of technical courses online remains unclear due to the challenges faced by students and instructors. Prince and Kirkwood 2013 believes that the educational effectiveness in online distance learning is still open to question. Also, it is likewise argued that the academic achievement and retention are worse for students following online distance learning programs than those being taught in traditional classroom settings. With these educational technologies for technical courses in criminology were developed, like the virtual automated fingerprint identification system simulation technology, but it is not yet fully deployed. This simulation technology allows students to refine their skills in identifying minus A and matching question fingerprints to a set of standard fingerprints. As part of the leading universities that developed the technology, the students from the University of the Cordilleras College of Criminal Justice Education undergraduate program were selected to try and explore it. With this, the study aims to better equip criminology students with tools and refine their skills in identifying the manuche and matching a question fingerprint to a set of standard fingerprints and help faculty members design effective course activities aligned with the learning outcomes, as well as help criminology administrators to remanage and redesign courses to meet the needs of the students and support criminology schools in their endeavor to produce a competent graduate needed by the industry. The paradigm of the study illustrates the coverage and direction of the study. This is study used the systems analysis model that presents the input, process, output, outcome, which illustrated in the four boxes. The input contains the research question that is sought to be answered together with the relevant pieces of literature and studies. Whereas the process involves the activities to be conducted to gather the necessary data. In order to determine the effectiveness of the virtual automated fingerprint identification system simulation technology, the researcher conducted a pretest and post-test subjected it to statistical analysis. From this, the findings of the study were generated as the output of the study. Finally, the findings of the study will serve as the basis 
to improve the student's performance by integrating the simulation technology in the course personal identification techniques as the outcome. In this regard, the study focuses on assessing the effectiveness of the simulation technology on the student's performance. The researchers want to know its effect on the attainment of the learning objective in identifying and matching fingerprint patterns. In light with this, the study seeks to answer this question. Is there a significant difference in the scores of the experimental group and control group? And to answer this question, a quantitative method, specifically experimental design, through the two group pretest treatment and post test design to determine if there is a significant difference in the scores of students with and without using the simulation. Before conducting the study, the respondents were informed of the purpose of the study and written consent was obtained for their participation. Should the respondents wish not to participate or withdraw, they may signify their intent to the researchers, either verbally or in writing. Moreover, any recording done during the data gathering procedure was subjected to the permission of the respondents. The students enrolled in the course were randomly assigned into two groups. For one group, utilized the said technology, which is the experimental group, while the others did not, which serves as the control group. To qualify as a respondent, the students must be enrolled in the course personal identification techniques and accomplish both the pretest and post test to answer the research question. Moreover, the test administered was checked by the instructor handling the course. Further, it is noted that the inferential statistics used in the study is paired t test, which does not require a large sample size. Both groups, with a total number of 64 students, then took a pretest during the first week and a post test during the third week in order to assess their performance in identifying and matching fingerprint patterns. Based on the findings of the study, it shows in the pretest that there is no statistically significant difference as indicated by a computed p value of 0.06. The scores of both groups have a trivial discrepancy, which implies that they have the same knowledge about the content of the test. Meanwhile, the post test showed that there is a statistically significant difference between the experimental group and the control group, as evident by the computed p value of 0 0.032, which denotes that the group of students who utilized the simulation performed better than those who did not. Furthermore, the control group showed no difference when their mean scores in pretest and post tests were compared which is supported by the p-value of 0 0.058. This implies that the students from this group showed no improvement in their performance. In addition, the mean scores of the experimental group are statistically significant as indicated by a p-value of 0 0.44. This entails that the students who use the simulation reported better results. Based on the findings of the study, it can be concluded that the use of the simulation technology improves the student performance in identifying and matching the fingerprint patterns. Hence, it is suggested that instructors handling the course may integrate its utilization into the course syllabus. Furthermore, higher education institutions offering criminology program, as well as the criminology administrators may consider exploring the use of the technology given the limited laboratory resources necessary to attaining the course objectives. Before I end my presentation, the researchers would like to acknowledge the students who willingly participated in the study in the College of Criminal Justice Education at the University of the Cordilleras for granting permission to conduct the study. Once again, a pleasant afternoon and have a great day ahead.